Today on episode 14 of the Play Guitar Podcast, I answer the question, how do I make my guitar solo sound better? I'm going to break down the common problems and give tips on how to move forward. Also, I've got some listener feedback, so stay tuned. Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode 14 of the Play Guitar Podcast. I'm Lee, and this is the podcast that's determined to make you a better guitar player. No matter if you're just starting out or you've been playing for years, this is the show that'll help you become the guitarist that you always wanted to be. On today's episode titled How to Make Your Guitar Solo Sound Better, I take some time to really understand the things that are holding lead guitarists back. Have you ever struggled with lead guitar? Don't answer that question. I already know. I know the answer. I think we all have. It's not easy. There are a lot of skills and thought processes that that processes, excuse me, that have to come together to become effective at playing lead guitar. There are very few, if any, players that just pick up a guitar and start wailing. It takes time and some work to get to the point that we all want to get to. We want to get to that effortless, spontaneous creation of cool leads. Doesn't that sound awesome? Just pick up the guitar and magnificent sounds just come forth. Uh, I guarantee you that your favorite guitar players didn't sound that great when they first started learning lead guitar. They're, They're just some things you have to go through to get to the other side of the game. Today, I've pulled together a lot of the problems that frustrate lead guitar players. I've done a little organizing of these problems and boiled them down to four main areas that frustrate lead players. I go into the main problems of each and offer ways to get past these problems and bring your lead playing up to the next level. I also have had some really great listener feedback this week. So thanks for joining me today and just hold on for our main topic. Playing guitar solos is one of the many joys of playing the guitar. I know many guitarists who live for those few seconds of a song where they they get to sing with the guitar. It's so much fun, and it's very addictive, too. And that's when things are going well. Unfortunately, whether you're just new to lead guitar or you're trying to incorporate some new techniques into your lead playing, it's not always easy to get to to the lead guitar happy place. And, And also, sometimes when you think everything's going great, it happens. Dun, 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 you hear yourself recorded. <laughs> While others that heard you play really enjoyed it, you don't feel what you played lived up to the solos that you're trying to emulate when you listen back to it. Your first reaction is usually to shut the recording off as fast as possible and start making excuses. Well, the recording was bad, or you just won't, you weren't feeling so good that day. <laughs> and then you break out in a sweat, and you get that sour feeling in your stomach when you're finally able to ask yourself that question. Do I really sound like that? Yep. That's what you sounded like. I know it hurts. You've learned your scales. You've learned licks from your favorite guitar players. The melody lines you create, they just don't live up to your own expectations. What do you do? Are there any resources to help you get better at this? Or is it time to do a Pete Townsend on your favorite guitar and and then just hang it up? No. Slow down. You're not alone. Everyone goes through this. Just think of it as a stage in your development as a lead guitar player. Let's just take a look at what some others have gone through. See what works to to get us through those problems and start putting those things into practice. Hands down, the best part of being a, a guitar teacher is the privilege of seeing students progress into working, playing musicians. I've had a whole bunch of students continue on as musicians, and it's extremely gratifying. When I'm able to go see one of them play, I like to try to remember the things that we worked through in in the studio. Seeing a student of mine playing in a band or at an acoustic gig and remembering all the hard work they went through, it always puts a big smile on my face. So I thought for today's topic, I'd look back at the students I've taught over the last several years and create a list. 
a list of all their complaints while trying to learn lead guitar. So I, I just started typing. I put everything down that I had notes on or that I could remember into different entries into a mind map. I use a computer to, to create my, my mind map. That's not easy to say. But you can think of a mind map as like a big whiteboard with post-it notes all over it. Think of each complaint as its own post-it note. I just kept putting them in and there was a lot of them. And when I was finished, I sat back and just took a look and it was a mess. After a while, I, I, I started moving one here and I started organizing them. I combined all of the similar problems and then also combined the remainders into groups. When I was done organizing this, the result was, was surprising. With all of those complaints, when I organized them, I ended up with only four main categories. And I was a little stunned, to tell you the truth. I, I, I expected this to end up a bit more complicated with many different categories. Nope, just four. So let's go ahead and see what I found. I'll introduce each category and talk about the problem. And then I'll give you some insight into why the problems exist and what you can do to battle through if you have this problem. Okay, so here, here we go. The four basic problems with playing lead guitar that I found were, the, and this is what they, they ask, my leads always sound the same, or my leads always sound too technical, or my leads always sound too sloppy, or my lead tone is all wrong. That's it. That was the big four. So I thought, okay, I, I can do this. I can tackle these four categories. Let, so let's take a look at the first one. And that was my leads, my solos always sound the same. Have you ever felt like that? No matter what song you solo over, it feels like you're just playing the same old thing. You get that safe feeling of playing licks that you're confident in, but it's just not working anymore. Even when you try new things, there's something in your playing that keeps everything sounding similar. You might even be playing a song in a different style altogether. It just sounds the same. It's like you cooked a meal and put too much of a certain spice in your main dish and, all of, and also all the side dishes. It's, it's time to take a hard look at what you're playing and trying to make some changes. In my research for this episode, I took a look at, at specific examples of students I've had with this problem. And after taking a look, I noticed something interesting. In almost all of these cases, the problem centered around one main thing, licks. That's right, playing guitar licks. Everyone's favorite thing to do when you first start lead guitar. The things that initially brought you excitement and put a smile on your face, they're now starting to hold you back. What? If you're new to this and not sure what guitar licks are, just go down to your local guitar store on a Saturday morning. You'll hear plenty of guitar licks. A lick is just a short melodic phrase. It's a few notes that have a certain sound that fits either a certain style of the song or a certain player. Licks can be used over and over again, and you can put them in different songs, and hopefully they're not so strong of, of an idea that they distract from the song. So, so let's find out why these cool tools that we have can be holding your lead playing back and making all of your solos sound the same. A good, well-placed guitar lick can definitely help a song sound great, but when you rely on licks too much, you may start to have different results. And unless you're playing in like a tribute band where it's important that you sound exactly like someone else, you know, completely copying other guitar players, although a lot of fun at first, it's not the greatest idea to move forward as a musician. I made a big move away from centering my, my lead guitar teaching around licks a long time ago. One of the big reasons is, it's the topic we're talking about today. A lot of new players get stuck in that learn as many licks as I can mode. Can you see the quotes around that? The learn as many licks as I can. <laughs> and, and, and when they're asked to play something on their own, it sounds like a, a string of other players' licks played back to back and over and over again. They think that if I can just play what this famous guitar player played, then I'll sound just like him or her. Unfortunately, that's just not the case. And when you start trying to fit all of these copied licks into a solo of your own, 
You aren't reacting to the song at hand. You're forcing ideas into a situation that, that may not be the, the best way to serve the song. And when you keep forcing these ideas into all of your solos, things start to sound the same. Another reason that things may start to sound the same in your solos is that you may not be taking full advantage of what the guitar has to offer. If you're new at lead guitar, you may only be at a certain level where you can play a few things on the guitar. Playing these few things will sound great at first, but if you're not moving forward and learning new things, what you know may not be enough to get all of the different sounds that you need. And here's another thing. Another thing with new players that could lead you to start sounding the same in all of your guitar solos, that you might like the way a certain technique sounds and you try to fit it into every situation. Say you like a certain way to bend a note or you like a certain rhythm and it sounds good and you may not yet know a lot of other techniques or rhythms. So you use them a lot in a lot of situations. These are some of the reasons why everything you play might start to sound similar. So let's see what we can do to get past these and start making your solo sound better. Okay, let's fix your licks. <laughs> the first thing you can do if you're new at lead guitar is to make sure you learn the basics. You may be missing some key building blocks to guitar playing that are holding you back from creating new sounds. A good practice routine with a good method will get you past this phase in no time at all. If you already have a good collection of guitar licks that you like to play, start changing them. No matter if they're your own licks or if you've copied them from other players, you can make small changes to them. And now you've created something new. You've created new cool licks that just by you making the decisions of what to change to them, they now become yours and they're different, and they're new. Also, a good way to get out of this lead guitar rut is to spend some time listening to new music. Grab your guitar, turn on some new music. Listen to not just other guitar players, but other instruments and other singers as well. Try learning some new ideas from them by playing along while you listen. You'll be surprised the new ideas that come from doing this very basic thing. Another thing you can do is you can start transcribing. Transcribing is just taking the next step from listening to new players. Once you find a melody or a solo that makes you feel something, learn it, learn the part and write it down. I use uh, the software Guitar Pro 7, that's what I use. And to me, it's indispensable. It's a great tool for this. It's easy to tap in the notes once you learn them and, and then you can save the song and come back to it anytime you want. Even if you aren't great at figuring out what the exact notes of a, a, someone else's lead is, just the act of trying may give you something similar to what you're trying to learn. And that might ignite a spark of ideas that moves your own playing forward, even if you didn't learn the part exactly. Okay, another idea to help is getting out and seeing a live performance of a musician or a band that you really like. When I do that, when I get to go out and see someone I really like, it always inspires me to learn and play new things. It just being in the room where great music is being played can have a profound effect on your guitar playing. If you feel that your leads are sounding the same, buy a ticket to see someone play who you really like. I guarantee that will do your guitar playing a world of good and give you a new perspective at how you're playing and practicing. If you start also, if you start practicing your improv without concentrating on licks that you already know, you'll start to come up with some new melodies. Try putting on a background track and focus on something else. Focus on playing through your scale patterns or focus on trying to play arpeggios of the, of the chords. Play special attention to your dynamics and your re, uh, and your rhythms and vary those. And don't forget to record your improv sessions and listen back. You might hear something new that you play there that you like, and it's all you. The last tip I have for you to stop sounding the same is to write out a solo. Everything doesn't have to be improv. 
there are a lot of famous licks and riffs that were written specifically for a certain song. If you know that you have to come up with a solo for a certain song, spend some time thinking about how you'd like it to be in the end when it's finished. If, if you want it to start slow, if you want it to build up over the course of the solo, write those ideas down. Then write your solo to match that idea. You could even try coming up with a lead by singing it over the chords, recording it, you know, and then, then writing it down to play on the guitar. Sometimes thinking about what you want to play ahead of time and constructing a solo can be more effective than just making it up on the spot. Another problem guitar players have with their guitar solos, this is number two, is that they sound too technical. Sometimes I hear a student say that what they're playing sounds, it sounds just like a scale going up and down. And and that really means that the part they're playing isn't really a melody. It, It could also be that the line has no emotion or it has too much going on. Or the notes played are not getting a human effect. No matter the cause, everything that's played sounds a bit robotic. So let's take a look at how we can make our solo sound less technical. The first thing we can try to sound less technical is to add some emotion to the line. Even if you're just playing a scale up and down, you can add some emotion to your line with dynamics and rhythm. If you change how hard you're playing the notes and break the the rhythm up a bit, it could sound much more pleasing to the ear. I'm going to I'm going to try that right here. So take a listen to this. So I'm just playing C major scale all in a row. But let's see if we can add a little dynamics and some rhythm. So I didn't play anything fancy. I just played the scale straight through. I made it sound a little bit better. There are things you can do. Even in that instance where you limit yourself to just playing the scale straight straight up the scale, that will help you get some more interesting ideas out of it. Another way to add some emotion to a solo is to sing or whistle a melody first and take those ideas to your guitar playing. You record a bit of your singing so you don't forget your ideas and then you try to learn them on the guitar. Simple. Uh, The last tip to add some emotion to your technical guitar lines is to add some tension. Try staying on one note for a long time or, or try repeating an idea or phrase over and over again a little longer than you might normally do. This is a great way to build tension in a line without having to play outside scales. Like we talked about last week, which is, you know, that's also a great way to add tension to a line, but it's a lot more involved. Let me, let me give you an example of that. Right there. A little too long right there. little too many times right there. So that repeating that first note a little longer than you would think I would, or, uh, or, and repeating that phrase, the second one, a little bit too many to one too many times adds a little bit of tension to your playing that could get you out of that technical sound. Another reason why you may sound too technical is that you're trying to do too much for what the song needs. Sometimes, especially when we're excited to try some something new out or some things out, packing a ton of licks and ideas into a solo will sound unmelodic. Unmelodious, I guess, is the, is the real word. And it, it would sound cramped. So first take a listen to what you're trying to play. Does that suit the song? Do you think it will affect the listener in a positive way? Sometimes even the simplest one or two notes will be exactly what the song needs to sound its best. So try slowing down 
and maybe add some silence here and there. Sometimes the listener needs a break to process all of these awesome melodies that you're, that you're playing. If you find yourself trying to put too much into your lead, try limiting yourself, maybe to an area of the guitar or to a certain speed or to a certain volume, uh, maybe to a certain, just a range of notes. If you give yourself an easier way to go by limiting what you what you can do, you may be able to be more effective with what you have. The last reason I found that solos may sound technical is that scales have some notes that are stronger than others and some notes that are weaker than others. Some new lead guitar players tend to play a lot without taking the strong notes into consideration. Having the weak notes featured or not featuring the strong notes at all can make you sound very unhuman. We love to hear tension and release and the resolving of ideas. So make sure you know which notes of the scale that you're using are the arpeggio notes, which are the chord notes, the strong notes, with the tonic note being the strongest note, and try to feature these notes. They give a sense of completion that sounds great to our ear. So that's taking care of thinking that your leads sound too technical. But the next reason I found that lead players have problems with is that their leads sound sloppy. And this is common for new players, especially. And, and usually you're usually when you're first starting, you have to split your thinking between deciding what notes you're, you're going to play and also the mechanics of actually playing the guitar. Once you get to the point where the mechanics of playing the guitar are second nature, you won't have to worry about playing things right. And you're freed up to focus on creating the melodies, figuring out what you're going to play. Just start working on keeping your chops up in a daily routine. One tip is to record a, of a video of yourself playing, and when you watch it back, be critical of your playing. Make a list of the things you see, good and bad. If you see something you don't like, research proper technique and add that to your daily practice. You can also ask someone that you respect to evaluate the video that you're playing, if you're comfortable doing that. Also, you can incorporate some technique exercises, arpeggios, and scale patterns into your daily practice routine. The more you play these, the easier they are to play. The last reason I found that lead players have problems with is that they feel that their tone is all wrong for the song that they're playing. Finding just the right tone for lead guitar is tricky. It's very subjective and it's hard for me to tell you exactly what to do. You have your own ideas of what a guitar, good guitar solo sounds like. But here are some tips that could get you into the right ballpark. First, make sure your guitar is set up properly. Sometimes if a guitar is not set up right, you can have buzzes and pops and click, clicks that affect your tone. Also, the types of strings and the picks you use, they, they have a big effect on, the, on your tone. It's a dramatic effect. So research what strings and picks that the guitars you're trying to emulate use and give them a try. You may or you may not find that this makes a big difference for you. The next thing to do is to research appropriate sounds for the style that you're trying to play. Find out what guitars, what amps, what pedals are common for that style. Now, if you can, borrow those before you buy them. Borrow them to see if this these things actually bring you closer to the sound that you're looking for. Or go down to your local music store and try them out to see how they sound before you buy. Another big tone problem is the use of too much or too little gain or distortion. Adding distortion, that's addictive to the new players, but oh, oh, to any player, really. It adds so much sustain, and it, and it makes the guitar feel easier to play. The problem is that a lot of distortion doesn't always sound right for the song you're playing. On the other hand, sometimes a bit of drive, a bit of distortion, is just what you might need to fit the part. The easiest way to experiment with this is, is to set up some distortion and play along with the song. Start rolling back your volume as you're playing. 
um, the volume pot on your guitar. This is going to slowly lower the amount of gain, the, the distortion that you hear, and see where it sounds best for the song. You can also, uh, if you're doing clean sounds, you can also add compressors or boost pedals to, to, to add some sustain to a clean sound that is appropriate for the song that you're playing. Okay, that was a lot of stuff to help your lead sound better. We, we found here that the joy of playing lead guitar doesn't always come easy. I've taken my experience as a teacher. I boiled things down to what I think are the four main problems with, with players learning lead guitar. They are, one, everything sounds the same. Two, things sound too technical. Three, things sound sloppy. And, and four, that the tone is all wrong. Then we unpacked each of those and came up with reasons why they were problems and tips to deal with all four of them. I hope this gave you some things to think about and, and helped you start making your lead sound better. Now I have a question for you. What change have you made to your lead playing that made the most impact? Let me know in the show notes at www.playguitarpodcast.com forward slash zero one four or on Twitter at PlayGuitarPDCST. This is listener feedback. This is where if you have a comment or a question I can help you with, I'll try my best to help you. To get in touch, you can always email me at feedback at playguitarpodcast.com. You can use the comments on the show notes page or in the contact form on, on the site. But the coolest way is to leave a question for the show with my speak pipe voicemail. When you go to the main page of playguitarpodcast.com, to the right of the screen, screen, you'll see a little button called send voicemail. And that'll allow you to record a short me message for me to use on the show. Uh, you can also get to this voicemail on my contact page. I had a lot of great questions and feedback this week. And the first is from Andrew from Twitter. He wants to know about diminished bar chord shapes based off the E strings. Uh, diminished chords are tricky. First thing you got to know about diminished chords, um, you need to know the difference between the diminished chord itself, the triad, which is not used very much at all, and the diminished seventh chord, which you hear a lot. It's very common. The diminished chord is a triad made off of the seventh degree of the major scale. In the key of C, that would be a B diminished triad. It would have the notes B, D, and F. Even when you play this chord, this diatonic chord, with other diatonic chords, it sounds kind of off. Uh, the more common chord that you hear is a diminished seventh chord. It's in the key of C, in the key of C. That would be B, D, F, and A. That added A note. But no matter whether you're playing a diminished triad or a diminished seventh chord, you don't really find a whole guitar chord pattern for the diminished using all six strings. Usually it uses either the top four strings or the inside four or patterns that use like a, a low string and then skip one and then you have a few more strings. There is a diminished seventh chord pattern that does use the low E string. And then it uses the D string, G string, and B strings. Um, a C diminished seventh chord in this voice would be, well, here, let me get my guitar. I'll play it for you. Okay, the C diminished seventh chord. Um, I'm playing this with the C, the root note of the, of the chord on the low E string. And so we have the first note is on the E string at the eighth fret. We'll skip the A string. Then the next note in the chord is on the D string at the seventh fret. And then the next note is on the G string at the eighth fret. And then we have the last ones on the B string at the seventh fret. So they're all on the seventh and eighth fret, skipping that A string. And this chord will slide up and down just like all bar chords do, but it has one really cool difference. It repeats itself over and over again. So if you slide this up, let's say we're going to slide this chord where the, the, the low note is on the 8th fret, we're going to slide it up to the 11th fret. So we're going to go three more frets. 
That's the same chord, just in a different inversion. And we can do it again. Let's go up three more frets. And three more frets. Go. Those are all C diminished seventh chords in different inversions. Pretty, pretty neat. So there's a way of playing the C diminished seventh chord and basing it off of the low E string. Uh, so thank you, Andrew, for the question and look forward to more on the diminished chord, the diminished seventh chord in the future. Next, we had Carlos V and he gave the show a nice, very nice compliment. I've been talking with Carlos a good bit. So thank you very much, Carlos. Uh, we also had Douglas. Uh, he, he said he enjoyed the show. Uh, that gave an introduction to playing outside, which was last week. Uh, that was episode 13. I really enjoyed bringing that one to you too. It's always tricky to find a way to start getting into this stuff, getting into using tension notes. I, f I found the minor pentatonic scale when you played over the, over seventh chords. It's a really great first step into the world of outside tones uh, or notes. Well, once you understand that it's really just about getting comfortable and familiar enough with these other sounds to play them confidently. Once you get that, it's off to the races. And the minor pentatonic scale over seventh chords, it's a great way to start playing with that with that tension sound. So so thank you, Douglas. Chris W also enjoyed the last show and we and we've been back and forth about a few other things this week. It is a lot of fun keeping up with Chris. So thank you, Chris. Thanks to Adam L for linking to my really understanding guitar scales post. He linked to that this week on Twitter and he sent me a great message and I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing some of this stuff. Um, so thanks again, Adam. I received another great message from Wayne this week. He had his first lesson with a guitar instructor and I, I asked him previously to, to keep me updated about how it goes, let, let me know how it went. Um, the student-teacher relationship, especially when it comes to guitar, it's an interesting one. Not every teacher is right for every student. And I know that first meeting, let's say it can be interesting. So you have an, you go into these uh, and you have an idea of what you expect. And the teacher has their own method hopefully, that they found effective. And sometimes that fits perfectly right away and sometimes it doesn't. Also, you you know, you have sometimes things boil down to personality as well, es especially when you're a beginning guitarist and you haven't done this before. You just, maybe you just don't know what to expect at that on that. What I will say is that it's awfully hard to get the full picture of how it's going to go in one lesson. Usually after two or three lessons, you'll start to see exactly what you're in for. So, so, you know, I say, give it a, give it a try for a while. Also, uh, and here's something to look out for. I have found being someone who has had many guitar teachers in my life that for me, this is from my opinion, the seat of your pants teaching rarely works. And what I mean by seat of your pants teaching is that you go into the lesson, you sit down and the teacher says, Hey, what do you want to do today? Let's do this or let's do that. So, you know, one week you're working on scales, the other week you're working on songs and it, it's kind of disjointed. And this is my opinion. And I'm not trying to upset a bunch of seat of your pants guitar teachers. Teaching off the cuff may work great for certain students. And that may be, a teacher's preferred way of teaching more power to you. If the student is progressing, that's awesome. But for me, there needs to be at least some sort of a method or structure to be effective. So that's my two cents. So if you were going to ask, if, if I was going to give you one thing, if when you're looking at guitar teachers is make sure they have some of uh, some sort of a method, some, some sort of path to get you where you're going to go. Anyway, that's, that's for me to you, Wayne, this week. So thank you so much for the message, Wayne. 
And finally, I got a great message from Alan this week. He is interested in learning about good playing techniques, the physical part of playing guitar and correcting some bad habits. Yes, I've been dealing with a lot of this lately and that's a great idea for a show or for a video. So I'm going to save this for that. So stand by for that one, Alan. Uh, I can see that one coming up in the near future. Thanks, Alan, and everyone for contacting me this week. This is turning out to be a lot of fun for me, so keep your questions and your comments coming in to feedback at playguitarpodcast.com and on Twitter at playguitarpdcst. Okay, so that's a wrap. Thank you for joining me today for the Play Guitar Podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the show in iTunes or your pod- podcast player or tell somebody about it. That would be fun too. Also, I would really appreciate it if you could leave me an iTunes review for the show. If you're interested in online lessons, go on over to PlayGuitarAcademy.com and join my early adopter list to get news on the opening of the site and an early adopter discount. Also, you can follow me on all of my different social media pages. Links to them are at www.playguitarpodcast.com. Thank you again, and I'll see you on the next episode.